see. What I'm going to do is you'll need to just be standing for about four to five minutes, and then we're, we'll get into it, and um, and you actually rip into bikes, and, and you're actually pulling wheels off and tyres off and that sort of stuff. So first of all, with, with your bike, if you've got a new bike and want to keep it in good condition, and by good condition I mean relatively clean, well lubricated, and um, so that, that it runs well. If you've got an older bike and it's been a little bit neglected, then you'll need to get it sort of into shape. And part of that is maybe having it serviced or tuned if the gears are not working properly, but a, a good part of it you can do yourself. And that is, um, in cleaning a bike, what you want to do is use minimal water and a mild detergent like a car wash. And you get a bucket and a brush or a rag and you just go bucket onto the bike and just, just clean, it, clean it all off. Then with a the hose, just trickle off the, the soap suds or the, the you know whatever you've got there. Never get your hose and absolutely squirt it uh, into all your working areas or anything like that because a little under pressure, a little bit of water will go into the bearing surfaces and the places it's not meant to, and then that will uh, water and grease don't go well together, and then that rusts and and really ruins your bike. So a little water, but do keep it clean. Now the area that really needs um, constant work is this drive chain area. So this is what we call the drive chain. We've got the cassette on the back, the chain here, the rear derailleur, the front derailleur, and the front chain wheel set or chain rings and crank set. So I think sometimes things have different names because the French call it one thing and then the English call it something else and they don't get on or not. Anyway, so, so um, this area here is the area of course that you lubricate and it's always changing and uh, is an, an area that can cause problems. So just to give you a little bit of insight into this area, what you can do is with a, a mild um, type degreaser, uh, anything that is not automotive, automotive degreasers are very, very harsh, they strip completely, whereas you want something that will actually, if you're talking a good bike anyway, you want something that will take the excess off but not penetrate and, and get rid of all the good stuff. So something like a citrus degreaser, uh, some brushes and they can be nail brushes, old toothbrushes, anything you've got around home or special bike cleaning brushes. And what you can what you can do is this drive kit area here, well the first thing, the reason we want to keep it clean is because when it is dirty and contaminated, it actually picks up lots of grit and dirt and then that grit and dirt and all your chain and cogs wears things out very quickly. So it's a bit of a problem where you've got to have lubricant on something but it also attracts all the all the dirt. So to keep it clean, a uh, little bit of degreaser, brushes of some sort, a rag, like so, and, and then um, some lubricant to put it on. Now to clean it up, what we, what we would normally do is, um, with a little bit of deter, uh, with the degreaser, is just a little bit on your brush or onto your rag, and then all around your cogs and your pulleys and your bits and pieces. Then with a the rag, wipe off the excess. Then because the degreaser is water soluble, generally, then you just sort of water on a rag and a little bit of a brush and water it and clean the, the, the rest of it off. Now once you've got that in good clean condition, the idea is to keep it that way. And what it takes is every time you, not every time you ride, but about every third ride you would need to apply some new lubricant. But you need to take the old stuff off first, which takes about two minutes. So you come to your bike, it's in pretty clean condition. With a rag, you just um, get someone to hold your bike or lean it up, put a rag around your chain like so, and then just run it backwards and clean off the, the, the excess. Now, see that's a brand new chain and it's actually pretty chip clean, but if that, was, if that had had lubricant on it and been ridden for a few rides, that then would give me this black, rubbishy, dusty stuff. Okay, so you want to sort of give that a general wipe, then just wipe around your pulleys here, so these pulleys, you can just sort of spin that backwards and hold on to those, and that'll get all the muck off those. Even the cogs here, a little bit of a, a rub and a, you know, get as much off as possible. Clean the frame a little bit, and then throw on some new lube. Now with your lube, has everyone got lube? No? Honey. Okay. Honey lube. Lube is, lube is the one thing that you will need with your bike. You need nothing else, you need some lube. And the idea is that um, you just put a little on often, and all we do is run a little bit, come closer so you can see. So you just run a little bit of lube like that, okay? And then to 
check it, what I want to do is just touch my chain in a couple of places and I should get a little bit of moisture on my fingers. Okay? If it's wet, then it's going to go everywhere and it's too much. Okay? And then as you ride, what that does is that transfers the lube from your chain onto your cogs and your pulleys and it will, it will just put a very thin layer everywhere and will do the job. Okay? So don't over lube, but you will have to have some. And then what you want to do is, is ride your bike one ride, then maybe it'll flick a bit around, clean off the excess lube, anything that flicks around, ride your bike two or three rides, and then what you want to do is just check your chain. And if your chain doesn't give you that moisture, if it's dried out, then what you need to do is quickly get your rag, wipe off the old stuff, two minutes, give it a bit of a clean, put some new stuff on. So you're taking off and putting on all the time. Um, if you're lazy like me, you just go, oh, I'm in a hurry, put more lube on. You know, next time you need lube, oh, I'm in a hurry, put more lube on. And eventually you've just got this big mess. So if you've got the patience and you can be bothered, it's the way to go. Clean, take off and put on. Okay, now there's other areas of your bike that you could quite easily, um, if you know, things are a little bit stiff or the gear's not just working properly or whatever, Without going into sort of um, tuning and, and really sorting out problems, you can lubricate the likes of your derailers, and I'll show you there. With, I'll just get behind you there. Sorry. So, with a, a Teflon type lube, you can lube your derailleur like so. Your, your front derailleur here. You can lube um, your brake pivots. These pivot the pivots through here. You don't want to get any of the spray near your brakes or anything like that. But you can you can lube little areas that um, may be stiff and not working properly and then just give them a good wipe. And the, the good thing about a spray lube is you can sort of spray it on, it'll go into all the pivots and the little, all, all the little working parts and then you just wipe the excess off. You don't want that excess there because it will just contaminate. Okay, so you sort of wipe those bits off as you've, after you've lubed it and uh, it's amazing how with your brake for instance if it's a bit stiff or not working properly a little bit of lube can just, just make it work much nicer. So that's probably just with that preventative maintenance, keeping it clean, keep your chain clean, but well lubricated. And I have an analogy, I don't know if it's actually correct, but you can imagine your car running without a wheel in the motor. It, 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 it will run for maybe a kilometre or I don't know how long it will run for, I've never tried it. Um, but when you put oil in the motor, it runs hundreds of thousands of k's. And it's the same with your chain. If you are not lubricating it, you, ha you have got dry metal running on metal, and it will not work properly, and it will, it will go slow, it will creak, it will wear out quickly. So really important to make sure you are lubing your chain. The biggest thing that you'll come across when you're riding a bike is if you get a puncture, taking your wheels off, putting them back in properly, removing mm -hmm. your tyres, doing the puncture, or swapping the tube, and putting it back together. So that's, that's what we're mainly going to concentrate on tonight, and then what we'll do is um, anything that you have had a problem with, or you want to know, um, you know, just make sure that you yell it out and we'll, we'll run through it. But first of all, what I want to do is show you um, removal of the front wheel. Now with a road bike, you've got a, a little tab here, which spreads the brake. Okay, spreads the brake open so that you can drop the wheel out. Now, if you've got a different brake to this, later on come and see me. We'll find a bike with your brake and we'll make sure that you know how to, to undo it. Okay, so what we do is we um, just release the, the quick release there. So these are the quick releases like on a cam. When I undo that, that loosens it. But on the front wheel, there are little tabs that stop it from falling off. So what I do is undo it a few turns and then drop the wheel down. I'm just going to show you how the quick release works there. So what you've got is a hole right through your axle, and the quick release just works like a nut in a bolt. So that's like your, 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 your nut on the end of the bolt, and this end here is, is your bolt. However, it's just different in that it, it also has this little mechanism here which has got a cam on it. So when you open that, it spreads. When you close it, it closes. The gap. So we put so the quick release back through with a spring that way. We put that spring on there and that one that way. Now it's really important that spring must go with a small end towards the axle, mm -hmm. not that way. We get a lot of bikes come into store and the spring is round that way. And what that will actually do, if you've got the spring that way, which is the wrong way, like so, 
then what happens is that will actually put your wheel on an angle because oops. So, so that will put the wheel on the angle which will then put your brake pad that will hit the tyre that could go through the tyre and give you a puncture. Um, so it's really important to, to realise they go on that way. Then all that does, the springs just centralise the quick release so that it slots back up into the fork easy. If you haven't got those springs or you're missing one, it's no big deal. And then pulling the, the wheel up, I just clamp that up like so. And that's a little bit, little bit soft, so I'll do it up a little bit more and then clamp it. Okay, and what I always do is make sure that my wheel is in All right, put the bike on the ground. Sorry to bang your knee. Put the bike on the ground, undo the quick release, and just let gravity push it right up, and then clamp it properly. And I always clamp with my, my quick release up or back, not forward. And the only reason that, if, if it's forward, there is a chance that you could clip another person's wheel and, and undo your wheel. Okay, now the back wheel um, is just as easy. There's nothing hard about the back wheel. Um, there's a few little tricks. So what you want to do to take your back wheel off is quick release the brake again, the same way. Then what you want to do is make sure that your derailleur here is as far out of the way as possible. Okay? So all we do is pedal the bike forward and change the gear down. Okay? So that's, that's brought the chain onto the, the smallest cog. Okay, so that gets the derailleur out of the way and means that the wheel will drop out easier. And then if I can come around the back here, I'll slip around that way. And then all I'm going to do is release the back wheel. Because there are no tabs on the back wheel, you don't actually have to undo it, but sometimes it does help just a couple of turns to free it up. And then all I do is pull the derailleur back and drop the wheel out. Okay? Putting that back in is the top part of the chain, or the part that comes from the top of the chain ring, the drive, the top, that's the bit that drives. What you want to do is make sure that that goes back onto that small cog. It has to go onto that small cog so that everything lines back up again. And the, this is the problem people have with removing a rear wheel. They take the, the rear wheel off with a derailleur on one of these cogs, anyone, and then they try and put it back on another cog, and that pushes everything to the side so that it won't go back up into position. Okay, so always remember, back wheel, smallest cog, take it off. Back on is as simple as linking that into there, onto the bottom cog, and back up between the brakes and back up in there. So really quite simple when you know how. Yeah. Okay, and people have a real fear about the back wheel. I don't take the back wheel off, you know. If I get a puncture, I'm going to phone my partner to come 30 k's to pick me up. It's actually not that hard. Yeah. 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 I've been that far. Yeah. And they come and they're not very happy. Okay, so basically uh, you undo the brake, undo the wheel, and t t give it a few turns and then just push the wheel down, lift the bike up. Okay? So that's our, that's our front wheel out. Back in is just roll the wheel in between the brakes there, down like so. Wind up like that, tighten up, and then the brake back on. And then you always want to make sure that your wheel is running central and that your brakes are not rubbing. Mm -hmm. If your brakes tend to be rubbing a little bit, it could be because your wheel's in crooked, or it could be that you've just banged your brake. Okay, so you want to just sort of line that up. Now, if you've banged your brake like, like that, okay, so it's jammed, what you can do is just get your brake and twist it back across to the centre and make sure it runs not oh, gone too far. Now, if that is loose and it's actually wobbly and too light, then you may have to just come around the back here and tighten the brake. Okay, so that's back in there. Now, the back wheel, as I mentioned before, it's not hard. Just a little trick we learned with the back wheel is when you take a back wheel off, always put it onto the smallest cog at the back, and that gets the derailleur well out of the way. Uh, you do that by just picking your bike up, spinning your wheels around, and changing the gear into the lowest gear, lowest cog. Now, for the for the back wheel to take it out, is undo your brake, quick release the the wheel, and then all you do is push the wheel down and lift the bike up. Okay, so that's, that's it just, out. Uh, back in there and then down like that. Okay, and that brake there I need to tighten up because it just moved a little too easy. And then it's just a matter of um, sort of supporting the bike like that, getting behind it and doing it up. That's a little bit too tight. So with the quick release, it needs to be 
when you, when you do a quick release up, from about the halfway mark it needs to be getting firm, and then to close it should require reasonable effort that couldn't just be bumped open. But there's no way it should be so tight that you're actually hurting your fingers or straining muscles to open it. So it's, a, it's firm but not... So if you've got to take your wheel off yep. and the bikes um, and the chains in them, say, are the third or fourth oh. cog. Okay, so if you do that, so, so say you, you, take, you remove your wheel when it's, um, when it's up here somewhere. So it's up here, okay? And if, so you, if you get your wheel off there, what you've got to do is release your brake, undo your quick release, undo your wheel, push this off and you'll get it out all right, yep. okay? Now you go to put it back on yeah, yeah. and you've got to guess what cog you're on. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Best thing to do though is just go click, 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 click down to the... It's easy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Down to the bottom gear and now I know that I need to put the chain on that bottom, bottom cog. So you don't have to panic. So don't panic if you take it off. You don't go, oh no. Sweet. <laughs> And then back in like that. Awesome. And we, how do you lie it down, mate? So and lie don't... it down. Whenever you take your wheel out, lean your wheel up, and your bike lies on the side that is opposite the derailleur. So if I was, you know, side of the road, got my puncture, lie my bike down like that. Lean against a tree, and lie it on the ground, but with the derailleur up. Okay? Cool. Yeah, this one is. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, not tight, you've got to hold this side. Oh. Yeah, so it's a big, like a big nut. You've got to hold one side. Okay. Yeah, when it was in the middle, yeah, but it will go slow. Yeah, and I'd like to understand. Here you go. Oh, yeah, oh, great. Awesome. <laughs> great. Nice. Yeah, that, that, question, that question you asked me. Wait, that's fine, that one. Leave that. This side. Turn that side. So that's the easy off, and that's the tension over this side. So turn that one. How's it going tonight, Aaron? Uh, we can, I'm very impressed by just how everyone's taking and drinking and all the knowledge at the moment. Um, look, look, look at the way that uh, Aaron Nicole's taking off that wheel. This obviously doesn't like Anne McCall's bike, Tino. Tino, I've heard so much about Tino. I am. Tino's beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so all come over this. All come over here somewhere. I'll try and stand fairly central. So uh, come in, come in close. Come in close. So what I want you to do now is undo the little little cap off your valve and undo the other little. Collar. That one there. I just want to I've got one. That's fine. That's good. Don't need them. Then we undo the little. The little that, you found it? That bit? Okay. Right here. So little the air out. Okay. And then hold the valve and just give it a push all around so it can really get all the air out. Okay. Now what happens is um, when you get a puncture, generally all the air's out anyway. It's just that. Um, it makes it a lot easier to change your tyre when there is no air in it, uh, or, or get the tyre off. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn a technique to remove your tyre without tyre levers. Okay? Tyre levers are fine if you need them, but if you don't need them, um, it's best to do without them. Because we, often when you're using tyre levers, you will puncture your tube. Okay? And especially putting on. Sometimes you've got to use a tyre lever to get it off, you put a new tube in, you want to then just roll it on with your hands, and that's mm, probably 99% of the time you can do it without tire levers. So what we've got to do is, when you first get a puncture, these, these being <coughs> new ones, new wheels and tires, the bead of the tire is easily comes off the hook of the rim. Okay, and I got told with the last group that it's actually called glue. Okay, so so what you want to do is, on your one, when you when you uh, first your ears are all out and you go to repair it, what you want to do is pop it off and it might go pop, pop, pop all the way around. Okay? okay. Now what you want to do is put your wheel down like that with your valve up the top and then what we're going to do okay. is we're going to put our, tire, our, our thumbs in like that and stretch the tyre round to the bottom. Okay? And you can see there, see how I've, I can then just, on this one, I can just rip the tyre over like that and pull it off. Okay, so so what you're doing is because the tire, because the rim 
is a U shape. When you push the tyre round, you're pushing it into the middle of the U shape, so that makes it so that it's in the smallest circumference of the wheel and easier to come off. So here again, squeeze it around like that. And then if you're lucky, you can just pull it off like that. If it doesn't come off like that, what you then do is put it on the ground like so and hold your foot on it, but not on the valve. And all you do is pull it up and push it across like that. Okay, bro. Hit me, bro. Shot, oh, shot, shot, mark. Now, before we did all that, what we should have done, of course, because we've got a puncture, is to actually go through and just quickly <coughs> to see if there was anything really obvious that gave you a puncture. So if there's a big bit of glass sticking out or a, um, a thorn or a staple or whatever, you pull it out and you know that's what gave you the puncture. If there's nothing obvious, what you want to do is, is when you get a puncture, you have to find out what gave you the puncture because you'll put a new tube and go 100 metres and get another puncture. The same thing will give you another puncture. Yeah, Aaron's. Yeah. So, so what you want to do is look for whatever's obvious. You, if you can't find it, then what you want to do is just rip your the whole lot off. And what I normally do is is then have it all lined up. So I put my my rim against something like that. Okay. And then I have my tire like that. And then I'll put a little bit of air in my tube and pump it up and see if I can find the hole, okay? If the hole oh, is right. here, fine. I know that whatever gave me my puncture is in my tire oh, yeah. here, wow. okay? So then I can really inspect that area just to work out what gave me the puncture. If I still can't find it, it could be something that went in and came out, okay? Like a, you know, a nail in or out or whatever. So what you want to do from there is you usually just search that area and then you'll find it. Um, and then it's a good idea to go around the whole tyre and as you go around, <coughs> just look for any slits in your tyre and they will have glass in them and often that glass will be working its way through to giving you a puncture. So it's a good opportunity when your tyre's off to get rid of it. So you just open those little slits up, pick the glass out, feel from the inside, push any, any bit of glass that you can feel through from the bottom, push it back out and just, just inspect the tyre and make sure that it's all in good condition with no glass. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to put everything back together. So our quick release goes on the left hand side on the front wheel and the rear. The cluster, if you've got a rear wheel, the cassette goes on the right hand side. Your tyres are all directional. So you want to look at your tyre and make sure you've got your direction sorted. Okay, so what we do is all you do is lay one side, one side of your tyre onto the rim like that, and oh, no tube on it, no tube anywhere, stay. Okay, I'll get us the other blue guy. So you just want one side on. Yep, that's right. Yep, because that's yep, yeah, because that's on the right side and it drives that way. So you've got to put one side. On. And now what we've done is we, uh, if you get yeah, anyone get one side of their tire in. So by that I mean like that. Does that mean? So one. Okay. Open up. Now what you want to do is spin the valve round towards you and just open the tyre up and push the valve into the room like that. Uh, from, the, from the top side. That's it. Yeah. So you just lay it out, push the tyre down and then you go. Good. So if you see what I'm doing here, just um, just tucking it in. All the way around. Okay, so roughly tucked in so that your tubes sort of like that. And once you've got it roughly tucked in, then you go back to where the valve is and you start closing it up by just putting the tyre just with your thumbs and you go round evenly right round the whole thing. Now every now and then you might have to stuff the tube back in a bit. 
then in the southern you go around the other place. Have you got a bit of ear in your chair? Okay, so quote start from the, the bell, and then we just start closing up like this, like that. So you want to close it, you want to get what I mean, like that. So you put the tire, putting the tire back on. Okay, so wait, so you'll get round to it starts looking like that. See, see that there where you've got it almost on all the way? But yeah. this little bit. Yeah. So when you've got it like that, oh, you've got yours on. Yes, got it. Bang. No, that never happens on the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's it. Teddy's the one. So now what we want to do is, How does it look? Neil's so is just again, just stretch. Oh. Yours is on. Okay. Just stretch it round. Oops. Stretch it round like that. And then just with your thumbs, just roll it up like that. Now what you can do is, if your thumbs are not that strong, you can actually just with your hand push the whole thing across. So you're almost trying to rip the tire off the other way, and that will pop off. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yours on? Yours on? You're definitely trained for iron mile. You're doing this. <laughs> okay. If you've got a, a full pump, you can tell because um, you've got a gauge and you want to put about 100 psi in. Okay. Um, some some tires will say you know run to 120 or uh, if it's a cheaper tire it might say run to 90 psi so just check the side of the tire. I actually run 100 maximum 110 psi and I have a bit of a theory. I reckon that when you go too tight you get a harsher ride for a start and also you you start to might this is only a theory you start to make your tire a little bit too much balloon like. And when you get a nick of glass, it actually pops or it expands. It actually, the pressure just splits open. So I reckon 100 psi is a pretty good pressure. If you're racing track with really high quality tyres and they, you know, they pump to a 200 psi or something, then that's what you've yeah. got to use, and you know, that's a different game. So, mm. 125. I would do 100, 110. Yeah. Yeah, the max I would ride is 100, 110, and that's also because I'm probably not 70 kgs anyway, so. Uh, yeah, there are tyres that are more puncture resistant than others, but they are, they are heavier and sluggish. So a, 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 a race tyre is light and you can get with reasonable puncture resistance. Um, a, what, what brands are they? Oh, every brand would do a puncture resistant type tyre. So, you know, if it was Kender, they do... Um, lightweight, thin sort of race tires. They do um, iron cap or you know. Should I hit some? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. So a folding tire. The only difference is that a folding tire has a um, a, a rope bead yeah. and a the standard one has a wire bead. Um, the wire bead is a little bit heavier. And also the side wall is not quite so supple. So it's that the there, yeah, that's a wire bead. So it's a little bit heavier, and it also the the way the tire works is not quite as agile as something with a cloth bead or a rope bead. Are uh, folded ones easier to change? Not really. Not really. No, I don't think so. Possibly actually harder because at least this holds its shape better. Yeah. Actually, we'll put the wheels in a minute. What we'll do first, just come this way again. Sorry. So, um, what we're going to do is just a little check, a safety thing before you ride your bike. Um, it's really important that if you, when you hop on your bike, that it works safely. Okay. Um, one of the most important things is to make sure that your brakes are engaging properly. So I actually, as a habit, whenever I hop on my bike, I've got a little slight slope in my driveway, and I always just go down the drive and I just test my brakes. Okay, so just pulling them on. Now, if you have this sort of brake that we've been working with tonight, usually, even if they are disengaged, you, you still have a little bit of braking. They might pull all the way to the levers, but you might get a little bit of braking. If you've got V brakes, which are those ones that stick up, like that, you know, anyone got those? No? Mountain, older mountain side. Things, With those, if you have those disconnected, if you've had your wheel out and those disconnected, then um, 
they will not work at all. So you can you can put your wheels in, forget your brakes, go down a hill, and you'll have no braking whatsoever if they're dis disconnected. Um, yeah, he will. The other thing is that if anything is loose, it must be tightened. So like your handlebars, you know, if you if you can easily move your handlebars, then you must tighten it up or get it tightened up. Any bike shop will just tighten it up for you, just to tighten it. You know, this, this just one of those things that you need to do. Um, if your saddle is, you know, loose or creaky, get a, a, an Allen key tool and I actually grab that sort of thing. A little set of Allen keys, you know, just the individuals or an Allen key tool like that, and to just go over your bike and make sure that everything is is tight. Make sure you don't strip it, or over tighten it, but just make sure that everything is nipped up nice and firm um, for safety. There's nothing worse than you know you turning your your handlebar and your you know your, your handlebar turns and you'll you go straight ahead and all that sort of stuff. The other thing is making sure we've been doing those quick releases. Make sure that those quick releases are done up nice and firm. Um, it's very rare, but you can. You, your front wheel actually has the little tabs to hold it on, but on rare occasions you can you, you quick release can flick open and your wheel can rip out or twist and buckle and send you over the handlebars. So make sure that you've actually got that nice and firm. Um, even get someone to check it for you. You know, hey, look, I've done that. Can you just check it? And then you better check what they do in case they muck it up. <laughs> anyway, but double check these things. Um, and generally, cycling is a really safe sport as long as you just follow some of these little tips and procedures. Um, the other thing uh, when actually riding the bike is always make sure or always imagine that the car has not seen you. Okay, Ride completely defensively and imagine that you're invisible because a car, you know, especially at night, they're looking for um, truck lights, you know, they're looking for lots of mass, not just a little bike. And uh, I, I've never ever been hit by a car. I've had plenty of close ones and near misses, but that's because I'm always assuming that they're going to run me over. Mm -hmm. And even going down the motorway, I'm going down the motorway, and I'm assuming that car that's coming up. I, I know what's coming behind me, and I'm I'm assuming that that car is actually going to run me over. So I'm ready to, to get out of the way. And I think that's the only way you can ride a bike safely. Um, yeah. And especially coming to intersections, you know, you race to an intersection, there's a car at the intersection <coughs> intersection at night. Don't assume that car has seen you and is not going to pull out in front of you. <laughs> in fact, ride as if he is. And, yeah, you should, should be really safe. Um, the thing that really annoys me with cycling is that um, people, people go on about the danger of cycling, but it's actually the motorist that's the danger, not the cyclist generally. However, a lot of cyclists actually, you know, they do... Uh, ask for trouble running red lights and swerving in and out of cars and all that sort of stuff. Oh, yes. Give us a yeah. Well, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, and, and definitely with the car, the, the car driver thing, a lot of car drivers, you know, they hate cyclists. Um, we're targets. And I've, I've been a car driver when I've wanted to run over cyclists, <laughs> you know. Um, but it's about just, you know, being courteous. If you're riding two up and there's a car behind you, single file out, give them away and you'll find that everything will work a whole lot nicer. Um, I've had horrible experiences where going down the motorway and I've had um, containers of, you know, McDonald's ice, you know, the ice out of the drinks, thrown at me, you know. I've had um, people swerve so close and then you look at them and they're looking in the rear vision with a big grin on their face, you know. Um, so some motorists do like to, you know, do stupid things, but, yeah, do a bit. Now the other thing we um, did go through the other day was just really quickly was a bit about cadence. Has anyone, um, what you want to do is make sure that you are not riding in too big a gear. Um, and the other thing I can do too is actually show you how the gears work. A lot of people have no idea how to, how to yeah. use them. But first of all, cadence is very, very easy counted. You can have a, a fancy um, computer which tells you how many revolutions you're doing. So cadence is pedal revolutions. Or you can just simply, with a timer on your bike, count it out. So if, you're, if you've got uh, 30 seconds on your counter, you want your right leg to come up 45 times roughly. Okay? Minimum of 40, 45 roughly there. If, you are, if you're doing, so that's roughly 90 revolutions per minute, which in actual fact is something like that. Okay? Whereas a lot of you will be grinding along like that. Okay? And what you'll be doing is building uh, massive 
muscle on your leg, but no real speed or fitness. So you won't actually get any faster. So you want to keep that cadence up, and that will, that will get you fit, that will get you strong, and then as you get fitter and stronger, you keep that same cadence, but you just put it into a harder gear, which makes you go faster. Okay? So a lot of people grind along in a big gear and wonder why they don't ever get any faster and people overtake them. And a good thing to do is watch um, YouTube, a peloton of cyclists, and you look at how fast their revolutions are. They're really quick. Really, really quick. And uh, if you want big muscles, just go and do some hills. You'll get, <laughs> you'll get big muscles, yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry. Is it where um, spin class helps? Yeah, spin, spin would be really good for that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But most people left to their own actually ride in far too big a gear. Yeah. Okay? And you don't, you know, you don't, um, it's a bit like, you know, the old powerlifters that go to the gym and they've got this great big muscle but it's really useless, they can't do anything with it. Uh, whereas an athlete has much leaner and quicker, quicker muscle, which is faster and fitter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did it sound so good to me? You gotta get